So, between last Sunday's Gospel and this Sunday's Gospel, there's a couple of things that we've skipped. We missed the plucking of grain on the Sabbath, and the curing of the man with the withered hand. These are more teachings in St. Luke's Gospel on the true nature of the Sabbath. Not ignoring the fact that it is a day of rest, but also recognizing that we still do good on the Sabbath. And then immediately prior to the Gospel today, our Lord is praying all night when he cho and then chooses the Twelve, which teaches us the importance of praying, especially before making very important decisions. Now, because we are going to be uh, beginning Lent very soon, you're going to need to read ahead. And so uh, Lent and Easter has its own set of readings. So in order to continue Luke's Gospel, you're going to want to skip ahead, or not skip ahead, read ahead through uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 50, because after Easter, we'll pick up there with the Gospel. Obviously, we'll have other passages from Luke during Lent, but they're going to bounce around to fit the themes of Lent. Now, for today's Gospel, after setting up the scene, the lectionary omits two verses, and which are, as often happens when they skip verses, very important. Verse 18 makes another reference to Jesus' ministry of exorcism, which we do not hear about often enough, especially in light of the fact that we found the pentagrams marked on the doors of the church Friday morning. So we ignore this aspect of reality and priestly ministry at our own peril. The next verse says that the crowds sought to touch him because power came forth from merely touching him. And of course, modernists don't like that, so we don't bring that up in the lectionary, but it is in the Bible. The fact is, is that sacramentals, blessed objects, holy objects, the relics of the saints, are used by God to convey his power, and we should not ignore those. And it's also a good reminder that we not only can touch Jesus, we can eat him, that he comes to us in the Holy Eucharist. He is present here, and he comes to us in Holy Communion. <clears throat> Many of us do so out of routine, and we need to be more aware and be more properly disposed when we receive him. Some of us could be receiving him more often than we do, and some people are not making the effort to go to confession to correct their situations in order to receive our Lord. Now, this first part of the Sermon on the Plain has the blessings and the woes. This is just a brief commentary on these because they need to be properly understood in the context, of course, of the whole passage and in the light of the Gospel. Jesus is not saying that poverty is good because it's poverty. In fact, in St. Matthew's Gospel, we have that added clarification of the poor in spirit. The reason there is value to poverty, or at least not having as much as we would like, is because it helps detach us from worldly things. We do not find our consolation in God the Creator because we try to find our consolation in the creation. Starving is obviously not a good thing, but neither is gluttony, filling ourselves so much that we are content purely in a natural, worldly way. <clears throat> Persecution is not good in itself, but when it comes in the name of Christ as being his disciples, the fact is that it's part of being a disciple. In fact, if we are not persecuted, at least in a small way, by other people or by demons, then are we really following Christ? 